The Tamdu Distillery has been making single malt scotch whiskey since 1897, but something fishy is going on with this distillery. Let's talk about Tamdu. Hey guys, welcome back to Whiskey on the West Coast. Matt here, and today we're going to be talking about the Tamdu Distillery from the Speyside region of Scotland. Now, the Tamdu Distillery, it is a true Speyside distillery. It is located basically right on the banks of the River Spey, um, and it's been making dis uh, whiskey since 1897. Now, it's gone through a few closures in that time period. Most recently, it was actually mothballed in 2009 before it was sold by the Edrington Group uh, the owners of like McAllen and Highland Park, to the uh, Ian McLeod Distiller Group, um, which then reopened it in 2012. So they purchased Tamdu in 2011, they reopened it in 2012. Now, um, something that's actually really unique about Tamdu, at least in the past, was that they used Saladin boxes to malt their barley since about the 1950s, um, which was a really interesting way of just like mass malting barley without using a malting floor. Now, sadly, when Ian McLeod Distillers did take over um, Tamdu, and they're, they're, they're the minds behind like Glen Goyne and the reopening of Rosebank, they know what they're doing with whiskey, uh, Ian McLeod. But they decided not to go ahead and continue using the salad and boxes. So that's a bit unfortunate. However, um, Tamdu is uh, a brand that's really making a name for uh, itself in single malt scotch whiskey circles because what Ian McLeod Distillers did is they actually started to market Tamdu as a single malt scotch whiskey itself, as opposed to just something that was a, a component of blends. Tamdu was um, used as a component in blends like uh, Cuddy Sark and Famous Grouse. And so that's where it would usually wind up. It wasn't really bottled as its own product. Not so anymore. So uh, a bit about how they are handling Tamdu, it's solely matured in sherry casks, specifically Oloroso sherry casks, first and second fill Oloroso sherry casks. These are mainly European oak, but some of them are still American oak, but sherry casks. Gotta love sherry casks, matured whiskey. Um, it's really hot right now. They are amping up their production. I think back in 2015, they were about like two and a half million liters per annum. And right now they're at 3.1 million uh, liters per annum and their max capacity is 4 million. Um, so they're, they're, they're getting up there. So Tamdu, again, they're a distillery on the rise. And in front of me right here, I have the Tamdu 12 year old and the Tamdu 15 year old single malt scotch whiskeys. Now, what brought Tamdu to my attention is something a little fishy and I'm a fisherman. I, I spend a lot of my time here on the West Coast hunting down trout, catch and releasing salmon uh, on the Vetter River out here in the Fraser Valley. I love to fish. And I, I read a story about how Tamdu was partnering with some, uh, some fishing uh, organizations and some environmental preservation uh, organizations to actually uh, create a, a fish ladder, um, a fish pass. Uh, for the Atlantic salmon and the sea trout uh, that come up the River Spey every year, that migrate. Now, what happened here is when the distillery was built in 1897, they built a dam across the uh, Nakondo Burn. Uh, it's a tributary of the River Spey. And when they did this, they blocked off the traditional spawning grounds of these of these fish. And so they had nowhere to go once they left the River Spey and went tried to go up the tributary. And so now they've actually built a really long and a really high fish pass, one of the highest and longest in the UK, uh, so that these fish can finally have access to the waters that they would traditionally have spawned in, what, 126 years ago and prior, um, back to the time when Queen Victoria was still sitting on the throne in the United Kingdom. Um, that's, that's bonkers, that's mind boggling. But it's really great to hear that they had this idea to make right this wrong when they, they cut those fish off. So um, that was enough for me to invest in a bottle of Tamdu 15 to give it a try. And after trying the Tamdu 15, I went out and I purchased the Tamdu 12. So let's get around to the, the specs on these bottles. First up, we've got Tamdu 12 year old single malt scotch whiskey. This whiskey's bottled at 43% alcohol. It is natural color. 
and it is, uh, I believe, chill filter. There's no mention of chill filtration, uh, whereas with the 15, they do mention it. So I'm gonna suggest that this is chill filtered. Now, again, this is matured exclusively in sherry casks. Um, and I paid about $50 Canadian on a really great sale for this bottle, but it's typically between 70 and $85 Canadian. So on the nose immediately, raisin, baking spice, some fruit cake, some like artificial orange, uh, maybe like a, like a, a bathroom spray sort of orange or citrus note. Mm -hmm. Some spice, maybe a tiny nip from the alcohol, which is surprising, but very floral too. Um, honey and, and wildflowers. It's almost like a meadow. Um, yeah, really expressive nose for something bottled at 43%. Let's try the palette. Honey and a really nice malt flavor with uh, a touch of black pepper, not much. And then some chocolate covered raisins, um, for sure, like the raisinettes, the glossettes, sorry, I think they're called. Uh, like the, the purple box you got uh, from the movie theaters. So uh, yeah, glossettes, <clears throat> a touch of leather, the baking spice is still in there. It is surprisingly creamy for, uh, and a good body again, for 43% alcohol. Mm. Mm. Yeah, exactly what I said there. The chocolate covered raisins, the malt, a little bit of cracked pe uh, black pepper, the honey, creaminess. On the finish, some malt, a little bit of chocolate. Almost could convince myself there might be a, a, a touch of um, peat. I know it's very, very lightly peated. I don't believe I'm probably good enough to pick up the peating on this. Maybe that's something more of like a matchstick note as opposed to peat, but there's something else there. Either way, finish is nice too. I really enjoy this whiskey. I've been, I, I've started sharing it or trying to share it with more and more people because I think it stands up really well as an introduction to sherry matured whiskeys. Um, I think it's really accessible and it's priced at the right price for people to take a plunge on it as one of their more adventurous first bottles. So um, with that, the Tamdu 12, I think it's it's really well placed in the market at the price it is. And I would give this an 85 out of 100 for the score. It's not the most complex whiskey. Uh, it certainly could bring a lot more uh, in regards to 46%. Um, maybe do away with the chill filtration if it has been. It had good body, I imagine it could be better. And it, it, it's not blowing my, my socks off here. It's not knocking my socks off, but it's still really good. Um, so I think 85 out of 100, really solid score for this. I'm happy to have it and I wanna share it with more people. Now, the Tamdu 15, the big brother to the 12 here. And this is the first ball of Tamdu that got me started. And the reason why I even bought the 12 to begin with. Now the Tamdu 15, it's 46% alcohol. It's non-chill filtered, it's natural color. Um, this was introduced as a limited edition. I think they're keeping it in the range. They've also introduced an 18 year old recently. Um, I think the 15's uh, gonna stick around in the range. However, limited edition, whatever. Um, costs about $130 Canadian, some places more, some places less. I picked mine up for 115. And uh, yeah, let's get to the nose and uh, see what we pick up here. Instantly more complex. Oak, like Dunnage Warehouse. That chocolate, the orange is there too. Um, so something that carries over from the 12 is this orange uh, aroma, but it's less artificial and it's more like an orange zest, like the peel or you're like you've just shredded uh, some orange zest off or like say, um, a dessert like banana fosters or something like that. Raisin, prune, dark fruits, 
a lot deeper, a lot darker. Certainly there's more complexity there and the, the, the flavors are just more vivid. Um, they're, they're more um, ascertainable. Like you, you know, okay, yeah, that is, that is raisin, that is stewed fruits, you know? Yeah, no, that, that's the peel of an orange. It's just, they're quite vivid. Yeah, complex, it's richer than the 12. Mm. On the palate, immediately orange. Uh, cracked black pepper, then uh, again, a touch more heat uh, so that ABV is coming through a bit more. I didn't actually notice baking spice as much in the nose coming across on the palate. Um, definitely more of like a nutmeg sort of thing. Oak um, and kind of like a dusty dunnage sort of tone too, again. But the oak is, is present and it's noticeable. The tannins from that oak are, are are going with a touch of bitterness, balancing out some of the sweets because there's a lot of sweet here. So it, that's taking me more towards like a, a bitter chocolate, a dark chocolate. Behind that, the prunes, the raisins, the figs, um, all very well integrated, married together with that oak. All around, it's kind of a bit of like a fruit cake sort of thing, like a rum soaked fruit cake, so a, a boozy fruit cake which is kind of what we want in the winter for a, a sherry dram. Yeah, really nice body on this. Um, not as creamy per se, but still oily and viscous. Really nice. On the finish, I'm picking up baking spices right now. A bit of like black licorice. Some malt sweetness and still that oak. So again, oak, oak pulls through the, uh, is a thread that pulls through the palate into the finish. It's really nice. I really like this whiskey. It is a bit on the higher price uh, for a 15 year old sherried malt, but those are just getting more and more expensive. I think we're gonna have to get used to that, uh, sadly. Um, for a score for this, I was kind of oscillating between, is this an 87, is this an 88? Oh man, where do I go? I'm just gonna split the difference here, guys. I'm giving time to a 15 year old single malt scotch whiskey an 87 and a half out of 100. It's really nice, I really enjoy it. As you can see, drink quite a bit of this bottle uh, at this point. Again, I wanna share this with more people, get their thoughts, their opinions. If you have any thoughts and opinions on the Tamdu 12 or the Tamdu 15, please comment below. What is your experience with these whiskeys or any Tamdu whiskeys? And uh, the 18 year old that was just released, released a big, big price point. Um, something I've looked at and decided I'm not gonna buy. If you've had that, I would be really curious to know if it's worth the premium. All right, guys, thanks for checking in and checking out this video. Once again, Whiskey on the West Coast. If you haven't subscribed, please go ahead and do so. Like, comment, and uh, until next time, thanks for joining me, Sláinte.